And now for that iconic World War II C ration. These are primarily 1945 date of production B units. 24 came to a case along with 24 M units. The M units are, or meat unit, by 1945 expanded to 10 different menus. As you can see, there are breakfast, dinner, and supper B units. There were two different kinds of each. And then eight accessory packets. They were placed in between the cans, just like this. And they would, I mean, just picture, double stacked on each side. Just picture it, just like this, throughout the case. In 1939 to 1940, the first generation B unit and M unit weighed 16 ounces. There were nine biscuits in here instead of six. And then the coffee was 0.36 ounces. It says 0.3, but it was 0.36. It was reduced down to 0.25 ounces. This one was packed January 1940. The key was always placed at the top. This one came off at some point. This is just a little folding stove. And then some fuel tabs. They're period correct. It'll heat one meal of C ration. They were reduced from 16 ounces down to 12 by December 1940. C ration B unit breakfast. Save key to open M unit. You'd save your key to open the meat unit because spot welding would burn through this protective coating and the can for the M units and it would just create an instability for the can. A possible introduction for, you know, bacteria and whatnot. Now June 1942 is when B unit variation included lemon juice powder and cocoa beverage powder. This is a April 43. This one most likely has a three count um, pack of cigarettes added. And they were added to breakfast and dinner B in its March 1943. Now, I have conflicting reports where it was only March 43. And then I've read they were produced up until November. But in June 1942, again, that's when the variation of lemon juice powder and cocoa beverage powder was added. So you would have technically a breakfast, dinner, and supper B unit, which that nomenclature was added in 44, along with making these cans olive drab green, giving them a little bit more camouflage than the golden lacquer here, or even earlier, no lacquer at all. 86,759,000 was the year's requirement for 1945, but only half of those C rations were procured. So like 43 million C rations were produced in 45. So that's like 43 million times three of these B units that were produced. One, two, three, four, five, six cans and one accessory packet makes up a full ration. And eight rations came to a case. The variation of B units for the C ration of 1945, two breakfast, two dinner, two supper. They got a five digit stamp on the top that you can ID them with. Coffee for both breakfast units. Dinners was lemon and cocoa beverage powder. Supper was cocoa and coffee. This is the second generation C ration accessory packet. The very first one looks almost identical. The first one was packed in 1944 by a charms company out of Bloomfield, New Jersey. The only difference between it and the one from 1945, packed by Shard Incorporated out of Lansing, Michigan, is that the 1944 one by Charms has water purification tablets. The 1945 packed by Shard, this has salt tabs. That's the only difference. We've already given a 1944 look. So let's check out the 45 with those six B units. We're gonna do these three B units one at a time on the smaller mess kit tray. Then the next round, I'm gonna throw them all on the tray with the accessory packet, one big bonanza. All right, G1, breakfast B in it. All the ones I got had the key pulled off. My guess, they pulled it off for the M unit years ago and then just never opened this one. That's just a good guess at least. Got a key, lift up that tab. Now 
Nice hiss. It smells perfect. I mean, like, just so neutral. Just a light brown paper and, like, whole grain. It, it just smells absolutely fresh. Four sugar cubes. Okay, sweeten it with Domino. Standard. You get four of those. And then, look at this. Candy coated peanuts. Oh man, look at that beautiful packaging. Sugar and peanuts. Packed by Griggs, Cooper and Company. Instant coffee feels perfect. And the biscuits, which I'm gonna keep in the can for right now. Nice glassine, colored. It's like a dyed glassine. That's really cool looking. Separates the biscuits from the rest. So when they get real crumbly, just like that, which is normal, they smell perfectly fine. That's so astounding. I mean, there's shortening. I mean, butter, milk, there is. There's a little bit, especially in the breakfast ones. These are varying biscuits and Nescafe. Manufactured by Nestle's Milk Products Incorporated, New York, USA. Packaged by Miles Laboratories Incorporated out of Elkhart, Indiana. A perfect soluble coffee product packet, 5 grams. A 50-50 mixture of soluble coffee and carbohydrates, you know, dextrins. Allowed for proper mixing. Then there are four biscuits, which I'm going to keep them in the can for right now. That's looking pretty good. All right. Let's get this out on your tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off with the B unit. The cereal disc. I completely forgot about that. That should be in this at least. I think it's at the bottom. Oh yeah, there we go. Here's your cereal bar. Look at that. Like, no oxidation or discoloration, you know. Didn't get any darker over the years. Perfectly stored. It's just... Incredible. Something like this. Once in a lifetime is how I'm looking at this. I, I can't wait till I can eat some biscuits. I mean, these are just, look at that one. I mean, it really does look like a cookie, you know? Okay, let me get a piece. Yeah, slight metal flavor. Hmm. Perfect crunch. Just tastes so natural. Minimally processed. You'd pay extra for something like this these days. Mmm. I need to get some hot water. Alright, the peanuts. Candy coated peanuts. Look at these. Alright, let's check them out. I'll use this one for precision. They don't smell like anything. All right. Look at those. Those are Boston baked beans. Griggs Cooper and Company, St. Paul, Minnesota. That's right, look at that. These are Boston baked beans. They're small too. Like, these are Spanish peanuts. I've never even had a Spanish peanut. I've only heard about it. They're smaller. This has to be. Look how small they are. Wait. Oh, gotta be careful. Let me get a few. I certainly get the full effect, you know? Look at that. Like a brown, red, like maroon or something. What a way to connect. You know, with the past. These are like Boston baked beans that have a hard shellac that you gotta be careful with your teeth with. 
but it has a light malt flavor that's not in the ingredients list, but hmm, maybe that's from the peanuts? I don't know. Hmm. I'll turn down this chewing. They're perfectly preserved. That is so delicious. The flavor, such pure candy, a light malt. These really good dry peanuts with so much flavor, like a perfect peanut flavor. And they're like pronounced. Okay. Wow. These are an airy butter biscuit with a light amount of sugar. And they're one of the most delicious biscuits you could ever have. Mmm. And this, the cellophane, didn't get dark or anything. Wow. Let's save every wrapper. Oh yeah, I don't think I even looked at this. Compressed and packed by Doughboy Mills Incorporated. New Richmond, Wisconsin. Doughboy Mills, they made K rations. Manufactured by the Quaker Oats Company, Chicago, USA. Whoa. I got Quaker Oats from like the 40s. And it can't look at this though. Yeah. All right. Crumbles easily. Yeah, let's try it. I wouldn't believe it unless I experienced it, saw it, tasted it, brewer's hand kind of deal. It's not even stale. The milk hasn't oxidized or turned. So it's like an oatmeal cookie. This is your original, like, they still make these pretty much. Cornflake cereal bars with the milk in them and food packets for vital general purpose. It's pretty much like the same thing. Perfect, soluble coffee product. Whoa, look at it. It is a sight to see. That is cool, to me at least. I'm using the plastic spoon, metal spoon scrapes. You gotta edit every single scrape out. Okay, I'm gonna let the porridge sit just a little bit. The biscuits, gosh, this one's in pretty good shape. They don't smell bad at all. Nothing's even stale in this one. I mean, all right, the compressed cereal bar. I mean, okay. It's probably good making a porridge. You gotta be careful on your teeth with that. I'll bet a lot of dudes couldn't eat it dry. It's like, and probably a few others cracked your teeth on that. It's not a big deal. It tastes amazing. It's a great natural flavor. The milk hasn't turned at all. And it has a nice oat flavor. It's just oats compressed with dried milk and sugar. It's very simple. It was a great way to reallocate a, a biscuit space. Tastes just slightly odd. You know, I mean, soluble coffee product wasn't the best resemblance of, you know, fresh drip coffee. I mean, no real instant coffee tastes exactly like drip for the most part. I mean, sometimes these days you got some advanced you know, freeze-dried coffee or something, but, you know, some really nice, like, gourmet kind, legitimately, but every instant coffee has its own, you know, neat flair. Like, its own kind of, I mean, unless it's just terrible coffee. I mean, it could be, like, South African Rat Pack coffee or something tasting like nothing, but this has this, like, nutty, robust, how do you say the same words? Everything I realized it just recently, but it's true. 
Alright, hold up. Let me get the bite of this. Finally dunking it. Oop. Mmm. Yep. Like any nice, crunchy, airy crunch, shortening, light amount of sugar kind of biscuit you would dunk in coffee. It absorbs it well and tastes great. Just like goes hand in hand. This is looking pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah, a little first person view. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah, like... Gosh, those biscuits taste so good, it's unbelievable. The flavor, there's no stale follow-up. Nothing. That was a perfect can. Oh, that makes like a nice... Look at that, in the end, it makes like a nice porridge. Hmm. A little bit cold, still has hard bits. That's like sweet grits. Oops. Mmm. I'm just gonna <laughs> piece of oatmeal, call them a peanut. Mmm. Yeah, these peanuts are perfectly preserved. A nice hard candy coated shellac. And it has a malt flavor coated in a red dye that is slightly, you know, oxidized over time, I think. Or something. There's just a weird red dye, it's not that red. These here, I don't even want to save any. I guess I should, though. This is, again, like the only way you can truly connect with the past with a first-hand experience. Unless you, like, go to a place like a monument or something where you find treasure. Or like a, I mentioned it before, like a mummy's tomb or something. The soluble coffee was in a seven gram small cylindrical tin. Reduced down from seven down to five. Not much of a difference for your cup of coffee. It was too strong before anyway. This tastes better. Totally weak. That broke like glass too. Oh man. Anyway. Seven grams down to five. Took it out of that tin and put it in a nice, you know, little packet. It was perfect. It was brilliant. And it made freed up space that, reducing the biscuits from, uh, you know, six down to four. Allowed that. And then a confection, uh, a compressed cereal disc, and, you know, just extra variation. It was just awesome. Hmm. Better save the rest for display. Those peanuts are rich in flavor. The candy coated shellac has a nice malt. The red dye it is very reassuring. I'm gonna save this. No, I'm not. I'm gonna eat it. Mmm. That is either BHA and BHT preservative or an oil secretion. I'm not sure which. Either way, it's perfectly normal. I'm feeling so good about this. I think I'm going to go right over to dinner and stay up late. Here, I'm going to like shamelessly just eat these. 
It's like the chi you, know, you eat a bag of chips and there's like the crumbs at the bottom. That's what that was just like, pretty much. And, oh yeah, the peanut. I'm not going to eat this peanut, I'm going to save it. But look, red dye, that's what that is. Save that. Alright, let's take it over that dinner B unit. Okay, and we're back with that dinner B unit. N5, Coco. No key, which, don't know what the story is with that other than it maybe was on the top. Got a nice big key off a corned beef can from the grocery store this time. Let's lift up that tab. Gotta be careful. Those tabs are sharp. Nice little hiss. Wow. That cocoa beverage powder disc. Compressed to fit. Smells fine too. Okay. Hard candies. Orange and yellow. There you get five hard candies. That's like a dark orange, two light orange, and then two yellow. My guess, two butterscotch, one orange, two lemon. Before we go much further here, let's get sat onto a tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off with dumping this out. Without trying to make too much of a mess. Let's see if we can do it. Alright, four biscuits. The biscuits are that salted neutral biscuit type deal. Look at this cookie. National Empress Biscuit. There we go. It's a vanilla sandwich cookie. Incredible shape for 74 years old. Doesn't smell that bad. Just a little bit stale and like a canned cookie. The condition of these B units are just the best. The absolute best World War II B units. I mean, for the fact of their actual variation and their condition. It's like the original salted sea ration cracker. Okay, so get this. I actually filmed the part that I'll be showing on the second act first. And those biscuits are dry and stale, you know. Well, these are dry. Maybe I'm getting used to this. But anyway, these are not stale. Sorry for talking my mouthful again. These are preserved. A very neutral, you know, like, almost like soda cracker type deal. And... Breakfast, dinner, supper, by this point, their biscuits varied. I just wish the people that canned these, you know, could see this. Even just one person, I wish, you know, like just to know that their work held up so well. The people behind the development and the ones who canned it retrace an important part of the transition of the sea ration itself and to the more varied version, but before they got fruit just shortly after the war 1946 with the e-ration they were testing that out and canned bread and then it, this is where it like really started getting that variation but it's still like so old school okay cocoa beverage powder add the small amount of water and make smooth paste stir adding hot or cold water to fill canteen cup half full net weight two ounces Made by the makers of Nestle chocolate bars, packed by National Tile Company Compressed Food Division, Anderson, Indiana. Here. There you go. Let's actually try this out on its own. Okay, I just want to try a little bit by itself. Because, like, you really want to be careful with this sort of thing. I mean, I... I... Right here. This seems okay. It tastes like it has a grain in it. Like a oddly grainy and sweet, very cloudy kind of flavor once it's mixed. Hot chocolate. It's by no means 
that great at all. It's really not. There we go. Wait, wait. There we go. Here. I guess it is a little bit off. It has that light chlorine flavor to it. And I'm just gonna like probably just sip it. You know, not a lot. Because even though I wanna get the full effect, it's just not 100% fresh. National Empress Biscuit. I mean like look at this thing. The metal scuff right there. Yeah, that's so cool how it picks up the salt from the biscuit. This is a either vanilla cream or butterscotch. I think it's just vanilla cream. Okay, let's set that down. Let that sit on my tongue after eating it already, you know, having a bite. And just one more. Hold on one sec. Mm. Yeah, I love the salt. It's a very airy and not overly sweet, yet still sweet enough. The, the center is nice and sweet filling. The vanilla flavor is very sparse, you know, very sparing. All in all, a very good cookie. Definitely a hard candy. Hmm. What is that? That's like... A dull flavor so far. I'm not picking much. Like kind of a salty flavor. There's like a salt in it. There's like quite a bit of salt. Hmm. It's not really like a uh, butterscotch per se. It's just a very simple, weird, sweet and salty hard candy. Very satisfying. I would definitely give you extra sodium. That's really cool. Yellow. Probably lemon. Ooh. Brutal cellophane. No big deal. As long as it doesn't get in the cocoa. Oh. A very nice citrus, a pronounced lemon oil. Okay. Orange. Huh. A kind of musty, light orange flavor. Oddly enough, the least enjoyable of the three. Still nice. Look at this, right? Hold on, sorry. Getting all close to the camera. Right, like National Empress Biscuit. I wonder if they're still in business, you know, like I'm gonna definitely dunk it in some sketchy hot chocolate. I mean, what's life without a little bit of risk and excitement, you know, like I could be riding on a motorcycle or maybe like rock climbing or something. Those are way more dangerous than this, I'll bet. Shouldn't even compare them. Alright. Ooh. Wow, that was actually a nice way to do it. You lose a lot of that crunch. I'll just do that one bite. Man, it's just so salty. It picked up a lot of the salt from the biscuits. It's like so much of the salt fell off throughout this last any four years and just ended up on this. Mmm. That's just a nice vanilla cookie and, you know, salty biscuits. Dry. It's good they were so dry. It's great everything had no real moisture. I mean, just like the lowest moisture content. Brilliant canning process and well stored. For your perfect all-American at the end of the war, sea ration. You know, too bad the, the soldiers didn't get these, like, earlier in the war because they're so much better than the early, you know, B-units. Yeah, it just always has that 
awful flavor. You'd have to sweeten it more. Well, after I finish these hard candies, I'm going to take it right over that supper unit. Hard candies are just about finished. Let's check out the supper. Pull off that key. And lift that tab. Nice little hiss. Ooh, what are those? They smell pretty nice. What are those, chocolatos? I think those are chocolatos. That's a beaut. No can of treasure. Those are unmarked chocolatos. Four sugar cubes. Jelly. Oh man. One and a half ounces in that H.J. Hines Company, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wow. Grape jelly, my guess. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, and then soluble coffee product. Oh, it hardened up. All right, that's a big deal. It absorbed the moisture from the chocolates, most likely. Or there was just a faultiness to the packaging. And then, oh, really brittly biscuits. So before I go any further, let's get this out on your tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off by dumping out these biscuits. They smell okay. You know, not perfect or anything, but... Ooh, nice can. Let's try out a biscuit. Oh, kind of stale. It was like moist. Oh, oh, well, that doesn't seem right. Hmm. All right, let's try this piece. Maybe this is better. Oh, it just comes apart so easily. Yeah, there's like a dampness. There's like a deep flavor of um, grain. Light sweetness, very light. Like, minuscule amount of sugar, not much shortening. Oat flavor, it's just, that's not that great. H.J. Hines Company, Pins Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for the jelly. That's so cool. All right. Did it right this time. You'll see on the next one. Rubber gasket. Look at that. Let's make everyone nervous by fiddling around this with a razor. Yep. That looks good. Look at the color. Still has it. Smells metallic. That is so cool. It's a ceramic lined or maybe it's some kind of plastic lined container with a rubber gasket. It's like really complicated. Look, that's beautiful color. Hold up, just in case, gotta be careful. I wanna check this out. This is so fascinating. Oops, yeah, that's, that's good enough. But let's just make sure. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Oops. 
let's check this out. I mean, this is sloppy, but I mean, I could spread it on crackers, but like, who cares? I want to check something. Let's see, oh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't eat this one, man. Whoa, that was risky. I mean, you might not think this is too big a deal, but you know what I see here? I see a hole. I see. I see something that could go wrong quick and easy right there. I think that's all you need. I wouldn't doubt it. Like my good instincts tell me, you know, how long is that going to last? But isn't that still so cool? You know, let's have a chocolate. All right. When all else fails, these are probably weird, but who knows? Let's see. Oop. Oh well, it's just paper, you know, it's not a big deal. Still gonna save it. Alright, yeah, that's a chocolate. It's probably like a Tootsie Roll. Really old and dry. I mean, I've had them from an MRE from like 08. They're dry. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Like that? You gotta be careful. You know when things are like that? Hmm. We'll see how long it takes to soften up, but... Tastes good so far. It's just a waxy, hey, really hard waxy Tootsie Roll. Ooh. With stale, old, dry milk. And like the flavor of like a damp shed. Hmm. Yeah. With like a bunch of musty trench coats. Like non climate control. Ooh. Okay. Ugh. This is, well, edible, but not palatable. It was a bit risky with that jelly. I don't know. You tell me what you think. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a less than elementary amateur on when it, when it comes down to like microbiology. I just I think it'll be cool to check out some of the mold and stuff. Anyway, let's take it over to those three B units and then the accessory packet. So let's check out this breakfast unit. G4 coffee. Pull off that key. Lift that tab. Nice his. It says M&M chocolates, 1.2 ounces. All right, so I first want to apologize for whatever that is back there. That's the scuff that just happened that I can't get off. Here. It smells like whole grain. A little pack. Candy-coated M&M chocolate. And they feel, the candy-coated shellac feels perfect. Oh, I can't believe this. What? I mean like M&M's. I collect M&M's. The, the oldest M&M's I have are from 1951 and then after that it's 1966. I can't believe it. They aren't bloated. They... Dude, I... Okay. Sugar and milk chocolate are the ingredients. You get four sugar cubes. Domino Press Tablets. American Sugar Refining Company. They were first founded in 1891. Sweeten it with Domino. Soluble coffee product. Made by Nescafe, or Nescafe, or some glassine. And the biscuits themselves are really, wow, they're, the top one's a mess. That's a little bit better. I gotta try out a biscuit real quick. Sorry, but they actually smell pretty good. Oh yeah, ready to eat cereal. Manufactured by the Quaker Oats Company. Compressed and packed by Doughboy Mills Incorporated, New Richmond, Wisconsin. Doughboy Mills also packed K rations. I put the biscuits on a little tray for now. They're a bit messy. We're gonna go over to that 
dinner bee in it. Okay. Lifted up that tab. All right, here goes nothing. That's a nice list. You hear that? It's almost like a little poof. Check this out. You get a sugar disc. Great allocation of space the way they did it. That would have been a biscuit. Look at that. Brack's Delicious Fudge, or Brock's, made by E.G. Brack and Sons. I'm gonna say Brack. It's probably Brock. Chicago, Illinois. Net weight one and one eighth ounce. That is the coolest thing. Look at this. Lemon juice powder that I think it hardened up, but that's all right because this stuff really never goes bad for what it is. It's like it'll oxidize and turn black and it just dissolves slower. That's it. But lemon juice powder out of Miles Laboratories Incorporated, Elkhart, Indiana. Vitamin C potency, 60 milligrams. A lot of guys didn't like this stuff. It was too sour for them. That was the only way you'd be getting any vitamin C out in the field back then. 60 milligrams to add to two thirds canteen cup of cold water and add sugar and stir. There's glassine. Look at this. Oh, this is true war relic, like treasure. Wow, look at this. I mean, it broke up, but let's try and see if there's anything written on it that we can read out. This smells okay, what? I can't believe that. I, anytime I ever read about these things, I was like, oh yeah, anytime, if I ever find one of those, you know that's going to be rancid. But it, I don't think it is. National Empress Biscuit. There's a little bit of some like, you know, sediment of other components down at the bottom that kind of re, here, let's try a piece. Mmm, salty and very stale. Whoa, okay. Now let's check out that supper unit. No key again. Okay, lift up that tab. No hiss. Look at that. That is immaculate looking. Oh, it smells fine. What? Yeah, and look at Kraft Caramels. There's no spoilage to it. Milk, dried milk that I am almost certain is just fine. I'm sorry, I just freaked out. And look, look under it. Kraft Caramel and then the biscuits. Look at that. Cocoa beverage powder. Crumble thoroughly in palm before opening. They compressed it into a disc. And if you end up dropping it into the mess cup just the way it is, it will never mix. Made by the makers of Nestle's Chocolate Bars. Packed by National Tile Company. Compressed Food Division, Anderson, Indiana. Again, just showing all the different companies and industry that threw down to help out. I mean, everybody was getting an extra job. See that compressed food division packed by National Tile Company and then Nestle. It's like two companies worked on that together. That's awesome. And you get what looks to be five craft caramels. That just looks like it's from the 40s. Oh, nice. Ever best jam. I'm pretty sure that's Huckleberry Jam. Huckleberry Jam. And it looks perfectly fine. Are you serious? At a Glacier Crandell Company, Chicago, Illinois. One and a half ounces net. I bought these from some guy out of Alaska. Other than two sets of biscuits being missing, you know, we will be re-including them 
once we officially tray it up. But other than that, this is your breakfast, dinner, supper, B unit contents. Compressed cereal, M&Ms, fudge, lemonade, sugar, a bunch of sugar, coffee, a butterscotch cookie, cocoa beverage powder, Everbest jam, which I think is, again, huckleberry jam, and then five caramels. Okay, let's check out the accessory packet. This thing, oh, it reeks. It smells like, and it doesn't smell like rot, it smells like mothballs and like your great-grandmother's perfume. It's horrendous. Oh. All right, so you can see it is like a craft foil-lined paper. And the foil has like a, a dye, some kind of like purple dye. And it's delaminating. On the back, notice, mosquito bites cause malaria. If you're in a malaria zone, keep your shirt on and your sleeves rolled down. Use mosquito repellent when out of doors between sunset and sunrise. Let's see if there's an opening. Okay, actually, we'll just do this. Oh, nice. Look at that. It just opened right up. Wow. So you get your single nine-count box of... Oh, wow, look. Lucky Strikes. The American Tobacco Company Incorporated. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Whoa. Gotta be careful. Here are the salt tablets. Dissolve two tablets per canteen of water or take one tablet with a half canteen, preferably during or after eating. That's a beaut. Is there anything else? It's empty. Made for the U.S. Army by the maker of the Waldorf. A Scott Tissue. Scott Paper Company, Chester, Pennsylvania. Ooh, it just smells like... It actually kind of smells like bug repellent. Yeah, it's like varying here. It's pretty interesting. Bug repellent and old lady perfume. The accessory packet. It's visually astounding. But yeah, again, the smell isn't so great. That's okay, because look. It is like absolutely perfect for display. Peppermint candy coated gum. These sound fine. Look at that. Beach nut beachies. Beach Nut Packing Company, manufacturer, main offices out of Canajahari, New York, USA. I probably said that wrong, but I'm always saying everything wrong. You see the notice, mosquito bites cause malaria. Same notice on the back, the same message as this. This is definitely a sight. All right. Let's get sat on your tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off with that soluble coffee product. Whoa. Let's give this a nice little light tap. That's all it needs. Ooh, saw a little something flying out the top. Look, it's a spritzer. You know what? That means it's perfectly fresh too. Can't go wrong. Let's just slid it from the top right, right along that line oh yeah check that out Ooh. whoa look at this it smells like perfectly fresh delicious instant coffee i mean like a a vibrant nice smell it's like no joke the most preserved I've ever seen that stuff there we go I'm gonna skip the sugar I mean those domino sugar cubes I think they're worth like five or ten bucks a piece now I mean maybe more who knows let's look at these candy coated M&M chocolates net weight 1.2 ounces sugar and milk chocolate packed by Griggs Cooper and Company St. Paul Minnesota what are you gonna look like I mean I just actually still fine to a degree here I 
see green, purple, World War II M&Ms. Look at that. They smell fine. It smells like pretty good milk chocolate. I mean, there's bloom and the shellac is, you know, perforated through that bloom, you know, but that one looks good. Here, let's just, here we go. Couple green and purple ones. That looks pretty good. But this here is just one of the most mesmerizing things I've ever seen because that's a purple M&M &M from 45. Hmm. Sorry, I had to eat a couple. I'm gonna test them out, make sure it's all good. And you know what? They're perfectly preserved. They actually taste better than the bloomed M&Ms that you would find these days. Like it just kind of re-solidified and made normal chocolate again. Look. They're like perfectly normal. Are you serious? Here, I gotta try a biscuit. This is from that supper. Look, all the biscuits are different. You know, the three. Hmm. No staleness. There's a slight, like, weird savory flavor that doesn't belong. At least I, in my opinion, for a biscuit. Like, gosh, that's odd. Like a slate pemmican. I don't get that. And that's just a very hearty whole grain that's just old and aged and I don't know what it is hmm it's not necessarily stale or rancid at all a bit dry sorry for talking my mouth full again hmm okay this was from the the dinner just like the other one stale neutral biscuit this is like some kind of oat like malt with something that has like aged or something over time it's odd and this is a delicious rich almost buttery crunchy biscuit this is the best biscuit in any b unit i've ever had mm. let's check out a caramel whoa look at that sorry about tearing the wrapper oh that one's pretty good look at that that wrapper i can save for this one repro guy oh, that'll be great for that dude Nice. And the caramel itself, that's in great shape. Look at that. Oh, gotta be careful. I think I might wanna like soak that. Here, um, sorry. I'm just gonna stand here for a second and see if it softens up. A delicious, creamy, buttery caramel flavor. I mean, it tastes very normal. It's just super firm. And I'm gonna drop it in the coffee. Might give a slight caramel note to the coffee itself you never know maybe they're dropping caramels in and mixing it with a cocoa beverage powder and like really hot water and putting coffee in and making some kind of crazy you know mixture that's what i'd be doing you'd be getting tired of the same stuff eating it after a week and that's what happened this stuff was designed to be eaten for a few days in the field not you know the year typically is what ended up happening or at least like a month at a time Guys would lose weight, you know. Let's check out this Everbest Jam. All right. Oh, jeez. How does this work? I think I just messed it up. Here, let's get some pliers. Nice. Whoops. All over those biscuits, which you know what? That's okay. I wonder if it got in the coffee. Eh, I doubt it. Let's take a sip of that real quick. Could make some army mochaccino here if this is good. Here. I got a white spoon. You can really see 
going around loops. That has like a nice color to it. It's like a, I don't know, here. It tastes fine. Um, let's look at the lid. That'd be a good start, actually. Sorry about the mess. I didn't mean to do that. Definitely a flaky move there, but didn't expect it to shoot all that liquid, you know. Guess it's to be expected. And I also figure that's normal. It had a rubber gasket. That was a strange design. That's like plastic or some kind of like ceramic. All right, I'm gonna set this to the side. I'm going to try the jam. I think it's fine. It's smooth. Hmm. That's delicious. Everbest jam. Actually, it doesn't taste that great. I just grabbed a bottle of water. And, uh, yeah, it tastes like kind of... I don't understand what that strange kind of just dull metallic like follow-up but just to say I did, I'm gonna put a little on a biscuit. So let's check out the cereal. Yeah, let's see that wrapper. It has sugar in there, you see it like glistening. Let's make a porridge. Here we go. We'll stir that in a minute. Okay, and then the Brax Delicious Fudge. The fudge, I don't understand how that like looks and smells so perfectly fine. It's just, it doesn't give you an ingredients list. I gotta peel this off the back. I think it's just like kind of stuck. Is it just pure sugar and chocolate? Here, I'm gonna just take a bite. Wait, oh, can't. Whoa, you definitely, <laughs> it's like solid. Whoa, what? <laughs> it just turned into a hockey puck. This thing literally, oh, you can't, I'm glad I didn't just enthusiastically bite in any more than I did here. Oh wow, I'm trying to break it. Oh my might, I feel like I'll break my wrists. Ooh, this thing's as hard as a rock. Again, I think I'll have to soak it. Oh, that reminds me. The, uh, here, I got a different spoon. The other one's all jammed up. Let's see here. Ooh, yeah, look at that. There's, there's caramel mixed in with the coffee now. It's gonna be caramel coffee from 1945. Hmm. Ooh, it softened up. Look. That's the oldest caramel I've ever eaten, too. Mm. Let me show you a picture of all the different confections and candies that the U.S. used during World War II. That coffee has a slight, whoa, it has a, an accentuated flavor of caramel. Set those up there. Unravel this one with the jam on it. Yeah, I can't believe that jam just blew everywhere like that. That's really something. Actually, let's let's just soak this one too. Might as well. Okay. Caramel flavored coffee. I mean like I'm not too big on caramel lattes or anything like that, but it's pretty good and gourmet for me. All right, the um, the compressed cereal bar. I gotta be careful with that. I'm gonna let it sit for just a second, but hmm. That's good enough. Okay. That's really crunchy. Very sweet. Different than the rectangular compressed cereal bar. This one's got like a little bit more roughage, a little harder on the teeth. 
and more sugar, more granular all the way around. Mm, this is nice. Okay, let's see here. The biscuits. Yeah, let's try out the Ever Best Jam. Again, I think that's Huckleberry, but on the biscuit. And I'm I'm smelling like it smells like perfume now. Cause it, it smells like perfume because of Lucky Strike here. That smells good. It smells like jelly on a cracker. Nice. And this is fine. Put on a biscuit. The, the jam doesn't taste as weird. Those breakfast biscuits are so good. That's where it's at. And the jam's got a nice texture. It's not too sweet. It loses its sweetness over the years, I've noticed, with any jellies or jams. I'm not sure what that is. But I'd like to find out one day. The biscuits are all edible. Butterscotch cream cookie or something. Are you serious? How is that fine? I'm eating a lot of stuff. Tastes like a vanilla, like cream cookie, or kind of like a nutter butter without the peanut butter. A fair amount of sodium, actually. It's very salty. Unless that's picking up salt that like shook off the biscuits. I mean, because those were the salted biscuits. It could be that. Whoa. That is delicious. A little bit dry. I mean, it just tastes like a really good salty cookie. Like a salted butter cookie. Man, if I had like five or six of those like on a plate, I would eat them while watching a baseball game, gladly. And if somebody told me they were from 1945 right after, I'd probably say, nice. So then this, I mean, like, it's like a nice cluster of delicious looking, you know, M&M's. Mmm. This would be a great morale boost. Imagine, I mean, the B units started getting good in 44, 45. Really, the bloom is minimal. It preserved it. The, the shellac preserved them. There's a slight grain flavor to that milk chocolate. Could be the biscuits. There's nothing marked on them. They're unmarked. The best of the three, I say, I'm gonna save. Totally turn. I mean, it's. I'm gonna drop this in the coffee too. While we let that fudge kind of soften up a little bit in there, let's check something out. Let's give this a look. Okay, let's check out this. Look at that, it melted. It's just pure sugar and chocolate and maybe like a rice crisp or perhaps that's just sugar. You can't chew it, it's hard as a rock. You just drop it in here and I'm making the most decadent, weird coffee with caramel, which this is probably fine. Ooh, 
That's a sweet chocolate caramel coffee. I'm heating up my kettle right now. So I guess while that's heating up, you know what, that'd be a perfect time to check out the lemonade. Yeah, the jam. Didn't see anything moving under that microscope. You know, no bacteria. Check this out. Oh yeah, here. Huh, actually looks pretty good. That looks awesome, actually. Here, I gotta try a piece. Mmm, tart lemonade. That's what it's gonna be. That has sour candy. You could eat it just like that. I'm just gonna do the sugar cubes. I got a bunch of these. So. Save the other two. That might take like maybe about 30 years to fully reconstitute, but it'll be worth the wait. Let that sit forever. That is a sweet oatmeal. That's the way to enjoy it. That has great texture and it's nice cold. I'll bet you could fry this and make some really cool, like, you know, oat pancake type deal. Hmm. I just feel like, I don't know. I was tasting a lot of metal. I took a little break and sat down. I was tasting a lot of metal. But I think that's normal, actually. Wow. All right. I got some more hot water and let's do the cocoa beverage powder in a glass initially and then I'll move it over to the coffee and heat the coffee back up make a nice army mochaccino Okay. Gotta test the goods. Let's see. Mm. Oh, that's good stuff. 100% consumable cocoa beverage powder. It's perfectly fine. I didn't think I'd ever... Mm. I didn't think I'd ever come across that. It's fine. Perfectly fine. Look at this. I can't even believe this. It tastes normal. There's like no chlorine flavor or any of that. I mean, I've had all sorts of flavors with any of the cocoa discs. I thought they like put chlorine in it for water purification purposes. No, that, that was just like spoiled. This is not spoiled. This is just fine. I mean, hmm, this smells like grain and a little bit of like fish food with cocoa. You know, hot chocolate. Oh yeah, it doesn't smell that great. Like once you rehydrate it, uh, hmm, it tastes okay. It seems as if there's some kind of like grain added to it. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's definitely like a cloudy, somewhat stale flavor. It's good enough. Army Mochaccino from 1945. Oh yeah, that's good enough. Let's eat that last little awesome bit in the bottom there. That's all the good stuff. There we go. Oh yeah. Look at that. With a Brax fudge disc in there and then a caramel. Look at that, this is the most decadent thing I've ever prepared in this mess cup. You know, it's probably been a couple of years since the last time someone's done this. Here, let's take a sip. Oh yeah, I'm gonna drink every bit of that. 
Man, I've been cutting back on my sugar recently, so this is just really fun. I'll put this up here. Craft caramels. I'm going to save these three. Let's first check out the salt tabs. There's just four salt tablets in this glass bottle. They smell like perfume. Okay. Lucky Strike Cigarettes means fine tobacco. The American Tobacco Company. That is beautiful. Look at that. Give him a good flip. Sorry if I'm shaking. It's just, you get excited with this kind of thing, trust me. Wow. Mmm, whoa. They smell complex and very sweet. Slight perfume, but then the tobacco itself is very floral and sweet. A velvety, like, slight leather type smell. I'm going to keep that paper. I don't want to undo it too much. I want to keep this in good shape. Man, this smells so complex. Very strong, sweet, floral, almost sickly, like just very aged tobacco. And it's gonna be strong, I can tell you that right now. Reminds me of the smell of that Chesterfield out of that nine pack from the 44. It seems like tobacco in general just ends up like this very floral smell once it gets old. Nice dry pull. It's actually not as strong as the smell, which is, which is nice. The Fudge Caramel Army Mochaccino. Wow. That's really sweet and rich. I, it's really decadent. It doesn't taste like anything old, that's for sure. I mean, the Fudge Disc, it's, it's pure sugar. So it added extra cocoa and extra sugar with the caramel, which actually accentuated just the one by itself it's not even fully dissolved it, it really added flavor just a light glide on that mash you see that That's a nice flavor. It's a really nice flavor. That is so much better than I was expecting it to be. I thought it was going to be that nauseating Chesterfields. Chesterfields are strong. Lucky Strikes are strong, but this is smooth and not sickly sweet. World War II Lucky Strikes and some caramel fudge. Army Mochaccino. Very smooth and very pleasing. Like it's just a good, non nauseating in any way, no harshness. Lucky Strikes were your number one sought after cigarette, you know, in World War II, from what I read. Everybody liked the Luckies the most. You know, that was the, nobody liked Raleigh's. Chesterfields are strong, they're pretty good. Um, Fleet, Fleetwoods were pretty weird from what I've read, and I've yet to have one of those. The Fleetwoods are, um, they're in the three packs, and if I happen to come across any more of these strange first, I'll call them first gen, first generation, you know, accessory packets, 
I might come across the 3-3 three, three pack, so it'd be really nice. This isn't burning like 100% well, but I mean, it's kind of a firm draw. And it's maintained a nice bold flavor. It didn't just lose its flavor over time, kind of like that canned... What was that? That was a Chelsea. Yeah, that's right. The canned Chelsea at a 43B unit. That was a little bit dry, and it was smooth, but it lost some flavor. This has maintained its flavor. The cigarettes, you might not have any appetite. This, that chewing gum, that chewing gum leaves stress. That's what they put it in there for. Dental health, re relieving stress. Maybe all the confections are easy to eat on the go. All that sugar keep you awake. It seems like these cigarettes really do vary from one accessory packet to the next. I think it's climate controlled conditions that really make the tobacco age properly. I think I'm good on this. Yeah. And look at the thickness of this, right? And look at the caramel down on the bottom still. This is just the sweetest, most flavorful mochaccino of all time. Okay. Nice hiss. Let's stir this up. You know what? This is kind of like the lemonade that just keeps giving. You could just continue to add water. Like, probably throughout the day. That's some real deal lemonade right there. I'm just gonna put this in the fridge. I'm just gonna get a few sips. I'm gonna watch a good movie and drink this. That's perfect lemonade. I mean, it's not too strong right now. It's still very tart. Even with just two cubes, it's pretty sweet. Fully dissolved. You would need that full disc of sugar. You really would. That's very strong lemonade. It's amazing, and a great palate cleanser, and speaking of which, good old palate cleansing, beech nut beachies. All right, let's see here. Look at that, you get two of them. I'm gonna save one. That is incredible. They're beautiful, they haven't discolored at all. Mmm, really nice peppermint. Very strong. Perfect gum. Back when gum was real gum. All right, I'm gonna finish up this cookie right here. Scrape that off. That's, there we go. Mmm, I really do taste the metal now. I'm like picking up more of that. Mmm, it's still pretty darn good. So this, one to remember. The Lucky Strikes are okay. I really didn't expect them to be smokable. They smell like, you know, like grandma's lair. Anyway, so this was a 1945 data production C ration B unit set. Breakfast, dinner, supper. And an accessory packet. I'm going to go eat a tum. What an experience. Everything was darn near perfectly preserved. And... A real step back in time to see, I wouldn't doubt, easily guys in the Korean War and potentially even the beginning of Vietnam were eating these. I am not joking. A lot of times that's what would happen. They'd use up old stock. Definitely an interesting look at a very, you know, transitional point of the sea ration. This is when they started adding in all the good stuff. Your first gen of it, and boy was it built to last. This was something. Well, anyway, this is Steve1989. I... Hope you liked the video, and I'll be coming back at you with something new. Herald. Alright, cool. See ya.
this out. I'm going to turn it around. This is the exact opposite side. There it is. Look at that. And that was on that, the other side of this. Nice hiss.